everybody, uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in on you. Uh, just leaving the office, uh, about to grab one of the kids, had a basketball game today, uh, get him home, sit down in the office at home, and finish out my day. As has become the custom, uh, I'm finishing up video work that I didn't get to do in the office. Um, there's so much going on. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but Rick Wallace Enterprises is definitely working on scaling as we move into 2020. And it has been an ongoing endeavor for pretty much the uh, entire year. But as we wind down and we prepare to move into 22, there are some things I want done before we go into 2022. So we're going hard in the paint. Uh, I plan on having the greatest impact I've ever had on the world around me and the world at a distance in 2022. Um, I want it to be my greatest year ever. Uh, not so much for the personal accolades because there are so many things that uh, I've been blessed to do that I don't talk about. Some things I talk about for the sake of just inviting you into my world, but I'm really personal about a lot of things. I'm not that guy that's going to sell his success and by sharing things that I think are really my business and my wife's business and the things we do and where we go or what we do and what we have and all that stuff that's ours uh, but I do you know you can see without a shadow of a doubt I've uh, written and published 24 books in the process of writing 25 uh, you can kind of speculate how you want to speculate about that I'm currently running six companies you can speculate how you want to speculate about that um, I'm basically funding an entire community organization because in the last five months, I think we've gotten 150 bucks in donations. So, uh, you know, a lot of people think because I ask for uh, financial support that I actually get it and I don't. Uh, I mean, for those of you who do, don't think that I'm frowning on your donations. There are a couple of people who donate every month. And I mean a couple of people who donate every month um, and your sacrifice um, is appreciated I'm not going to talk about the amount because it's not about amounts with me it's about uh, people putting their money to me uh, definitely $50 goes further than 5 but $5 if it's a sacrifice it's just that it's a sacrifice and everybody has $50 to give um, and I understand that and I also understand this is my vision this is my uh, desire, this is my passion for the community. And while I would hope that everybody wants uh, to do something special and extraordinary and be directly engaged in changing uh, the uh, trajectory of black America, the truth of the matter is not everybody is and not everybody understands what it takes. Um, you know, it goes so much beyond talking all the time. Uh, a brother that I can't wait to talk to um, and I don't want to use his name because I don't know how he moves just yet. He's been reaching out to me. And from what I understand, he's doing some pretty good work there on the West Coast. And I want to connect with him. But we're just talking. It's, you know, and one of the first things that he says is we, we, we got to move beyond the talk. Uh, we got to take action. And, you know, we're in the community doing that, you know, uh, working in schools. Marion works in schools. I work in schools. Uh, I partner with people who feed the homeless. I partner with people who uh, offer services. I offer services to uh, the youth. I offer services to uh, disenfranchised uh, black women who are uh, suffering from domestic abuse and so many other things. I offer discounted price programs uh, for therapy for people who are black people who are suffering from trauma. Uh, I wish I could do it for free, but it definitely, there's so many that literally, I would literally go broke just sitting up doing it all, but there's work to be done, but I believe I'm doing my part. Uh, but but just, just understand that, you know, we're doing some things and I'm excited about it, but I think it can be done more efficiently, more effectively uh, with technology uh, the way it is now. There's no reason why we can't uh, expand our reach uh, exponentially 
in 2022 and that's what we're working on uh and obviously that's going to create some benefits financially that's going to allow us to do some more things in the community so i'm excited about that uh but what i do want to talk about is just this we've got to move from one of the reasons why uh like i said think about this i've done 30 years of research on the enigmatic issues that plague black america everything from poverty mass incarceration um the uh, horrible situation with the education system matter of fact i've written two uh books solely dedicated to uh the miseducation of black youth in america the first is the miseducation of african-american youth the second is uh academic apartheid i've written books on uh trauma uh and so many other things and i could literally go around and lecture and collect money for lecturing but what i can tell you is this as a public speaker as a person who speaks to the public as a motivational speaker as someone who is inspir as a, an inspirational speaker i can tell you that maybe 40 percent of the people that i speak to are moved to do anything and it's very little maybe five percent of the people i speak to actually are ready to take action and these are people who are out there that are focused and driven on something that's going to make their personal lives. But I can tell you that it's worse when you start talking about the community, you're asking people to sacrifice uh, a part of themselves for the greater good. And so the results are even less uh, productive. And so that means I'm traveling around and I'm collecting money. I'm building a reputation uh, for being a quote unquote expert, but I'm not really having an impact. I'm not really invoking change. I would rather touch people on a more intimate level and at least inspire them and convince them and move them. I'd rather work with people and heal them uh, from different things that they're struggling with in their lives through direct engagement and intervention than to walk around and get behind the podium and grab a mic and talk. Not that, you know, it's not something I love talking. I love speaking. I've been speaking all my life, literally, since I was three. The first time I stood on the stage with a mic and spoke and recited something was three years old. And I've been doing it ever since and I absolutely love it. But it's got to make sense to me at this point in my life. It's not, it can't just be to talk and it just can't be for money. Do I need money? I'm trying to build something big for my family. And that's in addition to what I'm trying to do. Well, and in, in addition to that, I'm trying to do something exceptional for the black community. So yeah, I'm always in need of more money, no matter how much I get, because I've got, I've, I've got a great need to reach and to have an impact. But what I'll tell you is emptiness is not where I want to get. I want to get what I get from a place of leaving value. And what I mean by that, my grandfather always taught me to uh, fill my space, uh, is the way he put it, fill your space. And I'm like, what do you mean? He says, no matter where you're at, when you're in a space and other people are there, don't leave them the way you found them. Don't walk in a room and leave the people in the room the way you found them. Find a way to touch them. Find a way to heal them. Find a way to encourage them. Find a way to empower them. Find a way to provoke them to become better. Provoke them to change. Find a way to be uh, an influence that changes people's lives, meaning that just being in your presence produces something. Be that person. And he challenged me to do that. So when I'm doing something, I'm not just doing it for the sake of doing it. I'm doing it because I'm hoping it, it'll follow you. Uh, one of the reasons I started sharing uh, some of my videos from other platforms that deal with motivation, inspiration, challenge, change, and all that on the Black Voice channel it's because I know there's so many of my people out there going through. I know so many of my people out there that need encouragement. So many of my people out there that need instruction and direction. So instead of just talking about black issues all the time, let's talk about life. Let's talk about what it takes to change. What it, let's talk about what it takes to grow. It's about something to me. This is what I live for. I wake up every day to be a difference maker. So I don't want to just ride around, catch planes, stay in hotels, and talk to get people's money and nothing comes out of it. To me, at the end of the at the end of my life, I'm gonna have to give an account for that. I want to be able to say the work and moves I made made a difference. But what what it's gonna call for 
are people who are willing to make differences. You know, like I said, instead of sitting up and talking, doing all the talking, what are we going to get in it? And, I, and I'm not saying there's not a place for it. I'm saying that for me, that's not what's up. I don't want, I'm not taking a shot at nobody. I'm not. But I think that with technology now, the message I can give you if you fly me in, put me in a hotel and give me a per diem and uh, a speaking fee can be done online for little or for nothing. And we can take what was spent, what was going to be spent on moving me around to actually invest in program, program development, uh, programs and services. Dr. Uh, Blanchard and I are always talking about wraparound services. That's what we constantly move on. And we both in our in, in our own every expertise offer wraparound services, but we also are aware of services that we don't provide that are necessary. And we also are aware of the fact that even the ones we provide require our resources. So what am I getting at? I'm saying that while we need money, and yes, we do, we also need active people moving. I told you guys a couple of weeks ago about the fact that we are in the process of teaching these boys uh, different uh, skills on the computer from programming uh, to other IT skill sets uh, to uh, coding and we need laptops. You know, gave you the address to uh, mail those laptops to and I'm going to put it in the description box of this video so that you know if you decide to do so you can um, what am I getting at look we have work to do and that and, and that's exactly what it is it's work I mean you know I get on YouTube and I talk because I'm trying to reach people not because you know I don't have something else I need to do that's why I'm constantly talking to you guys while I'm in my vehicle because that's the one time that I'm not doing something else. I can drive and talk but you know I mean there's so much work. There's things I have to do to run my business. There's so much content procurement, content development, content creation uh, engagement. Not to mention that uh, every day of the week the first first uh, part of my day outside. I wake up in the morning. I get my day started. Uh, I, I, I prime, which is prayer and meditation and getting my head right. Then I move into an hour of uh, reviewing my plans for the day. And then I'm dealing with clients to noon. And then everything else, you know, I might get a break to do a video every now and then, but I'm dealing with clients. So then I've got to jump out of that and move into another situation. And then, you know, uh, in situations like the clients I have in the UK, they're pulling me up into the afternoon um, if they can't work early in the morning because now, you know, I have to wait for them to get off from work. And when they get off from work, normally it's about one o'clock here. So, you know, it's a lot of things to be done. I said all that to say this, look, we can talk until we're blue in the face. We can sit up and pretend uh, you know that we're actually doing way more than we are um, we can talk and have these intellectual masturbation sessions and uh, where everybody's trying to talk, show, show how smart they are and what they know but nobody's applying anything to anything worth worthwhile we can do that and we can leave our great-grandchildren with the same BS we inherited from our parents and our grandparents. Or we can be that generation that's willing to plant seeds and nurture those seeds and, and, and allow them to grow into some things that maybe we don't even get a chance to live to see, but we can see before we leave this place that our work took root and that that generation that's coming is gonna be the one that's going to move and blow the roof off of oppression, blow the roof off of uh, white supremacy racism, blow the roof off of perpetual black poverty. We are going to be responsible for that. I said this a long time ago, and I've repeated it since then, but I said this maybe 15 years ago, that we will not achieve true black liberation and empowerment until we find black men who are willing to plant seeds that
that they may not live long enough to see come to fruition. We've got so many people who are so focused on getting their pat on the back, uh, immediate gratification, being acknowledged for how exceptionally gifted they are and whatever it is they do, how exceptionally smart they are, that they want their accolades. So everybody's looking for a quick fix. Everybody's looking for a band-aid. Everybody's looking for something to show, look what I did, instead of saying, man, we got to go for the long game. We got to realize that we're not going to undo 400 years of oppression in a year, that we're going to have to actually plan for the next 15, 20, and 30 years to prepare our kids, create an entire generation that's literally been inoculated against indoctrination and inoculated against uh, self-hatred, inoculated against the suggestive mechanisms and subliminal uh, messages presented through media that makes them feel inferior. We have a responsibility to do that. When I created Black Men Lead, I knew it was going to be hard because I knew while we all want to complain about how horrible young black males are, Nobody's going to want to invest the work. Nobody's going to take the time. And there's going to be a bunch of brothers that aren't bold enough and brave enough to step out there in front of these little rascals and, and put your foot down because they are dangerous and in many times lethal. We created it, though. So we're going to have to get out there. But see, I can, what I can tell you is because I actually work with them, they respect authenticity. They respect people who are themselves. If you're not from the street, don't come there pretending like you're from the street. Pretend like you're bringing something and you hope that it works. They'll respect you. They're going to probably see you differently, but they'll respect you. If you got a, a background where you come up in poverty, like I did, you give them an entire different look because you get to show them a side that they recognize and then you get to show them a side of what you've become. And you get to show them that there's something other than what they've been shown. What I can tell you is, it, it ain't a lot of people want to step into that. But we need some. We need men to model manhood badly. Man, we got so much stuff going on. We need men to model manhood badly. And like the work that Marion is doing with these girls with restoring ghettos forgotten daughters. It's 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 crazy how screwed up things are out there. We got so many suffering from uh, childhood sexual abuse, incest, domestic violence, abandonment issues. Uh, poverty and uh, I mean we, we, we got so many girls that Marion has worked with this is the crazy that have been trafficked and rescued and if you that, that the way these kids you're talking about 14 15 year olds that's got experiences and mindsets of 30 year olds and you got to try to bring them back and, and introduce them and give them a childhood and a hope we're talking about real stuff out here. You know, I watch my wife drive miles and miles and miles on a weekly basis to go out to the detention center where these girls are being held. Some of them won't be released until their 18th birthday. So a couple may not be. And then after that, they, 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 that's not where they finish. After they're released, that's still follow up. Going out and doing cultural things, going to outdoor plays, going to things, things again that's trying to introduce them to childhood, but introduce them to diversity. These things require resources. They require volunteers, they require planners, they require funders. Uh, it requires so much, but I can tell you what, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't trade it for I wouldn't trade it for the world to see the smile on the mother after I've worked with her son that she was about to give up hope on and she sees progress. I wouldn't get I wouldn't get I wouldn't give up on the world. I wouldn't give it up for the world. I wouldn't give it up to sit up to watch a kid that's sitting up there bucking, didn't want to have Jack to do with me. But then sit up there and now is going like so, hey, what's going on? Man, I've got a kid. My youngest, I think, is male. My youngest male, I think, is 10, 9, 10. Have another one that's 11, a couple more. But the ones that really get me are these young ones right in, moving in from their late teens into their 20s. I've got a few of them. And their mothers brought them to me. And their mothers cared enough about them to invest in them. My thing is... 
my thing is what are we going to do on a grand scale I'm one person and I'm not making an excuse I'm gonna go hard in the paint uh, if you know as I scale out what I'm doing with my other businesses it's also going to create a model for me to scale out what I'm doing here at the Odyssey Project in the Black Voice and I'm going to do it and I'm like I, like I tell my people and my clients I live my life every day I live my life on full because one day I'm going to leave this place and when I leave this place I want to die on E I don't want to have any um, I don't want to have any potential left on the table. On that note, I just got up here to the school. Look like I'm running up behind a little bit. So I got to get off of here, get ready to talk to my youngin', see how he did. Um, and you guys keep your head up. Yeah, he ain't out here yet. Okay, y'all guys keep your head up and I am going to do the best that I possibly can to get back at you before uh, Thanksgiving. On that note, I'm out.